Praise be Jesus and Mary. Amen. Amen. Today the church celebrates the most important conversion of anyone in its 2,000 year history. Saul of Tarsus was a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin, a Roman citizen. He was born around the same time as our Lord, maybe two or three years before G after Jesus' birth. He studied under the rabbi Gamaliel and mentioned in the book of Acts and Saul was zealous for the Jewish religion and for the law of Moses. So zealous that he initially dedicated all his energies to suppressing Christianity when the faith began to spread after Pentecost. As we said before, there is such a thing as a misguided or a misplaced zeal, and Saul was, shall we say, full of it. Uh, we first encounter him in the book of Acts, where he approved and consented of the death of the church's first martyr, St. Stephen, at the end of Acts chapter 7. In Acts 8, verse 3, it says that Saul, quote, laid waste to the church, and entering house after house, he dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. And then at the beginning of today's first reading, St. Luke tells us that Saul was, quote, breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, Acts 9, verse 1. So in the first half of St. Paul's life, he was led by misguided religious zeal, which is always destructive in some form or fashion. In his case, Saul's misguided zeal was leading him to imprisoning and terrorizing and even killing Christians. The second half of his life was characterized by what we can call well-guided or spirit-guided religious zeal, which is always constructive, you know, because Saul spent the last 30 years or so of his life actually constructing Christian communities instead of destroying them. So misguided religious zeal is always destructive. Spirit-guided religious zeal is the opposite. It's constructive, not destructive. So the question is, is Am I more constructive or am I more destructive in my walk of faith? Do I tear others down or do I build them up, as the apostle says to do in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 11? Yes, yes, heresies and bad theology are destructive, but so are rash judgments, slander, nasty comments on the internet, fault-finding, self-righteousness, spiritual pride, constantly criticizing the hierarchy. It's not just heresies that are destructive. It can be easy to be destructive, but as St. Maximilian Kolbe says, only love creates, meaning only charity is constructive. Never return evil for evil, but overcome evil with good says the same Apostle Paul in Romans 12, verses 17 and 21. As far as the topic of conversion goes, we always have to remember that it, only God can change people. At times we can help or hinder God's work, but the work of conversion is always His. For those who need a serious conversion, like Saul of Tarsus did, Typically, our strength is in praying for such people, not necessarily in trying to convince them with our words or discourses, because people with misguided religious zeal are rarely changed by discourses. I came across a comment by Mother Teresa the other day. She said, the world is changed by your example, not by your opinion. She said, the world is changed by your example, not by your opinion. And that reflects even the thinking of our Lord. If you think of the Sermon on the Mount when he said, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven, Matthew 5, verse 16. So we help God's work of conversion more by our example than by our words. It doesn't mean that words aren't important. It doesn't mean that, not at all. To say that and to be preaching at the same time would be self-defeating, right? So I'd be wasting my time and your time. Our Lord even said in today's gospel, he said, go out to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said, Matthew 16, verse 15. But there needs to be a harmony. There needs to be a harmony between what we say and how we live. And people need to see most of all that we live 
according to how Jesus tells us to live. And if we're merciful and respectful towards others, then many of them will be open to what we have to say about religious things. But for people like Saul, even example and good words, even that isn't enough. For them, God has to intervene directly. Pope Benedict XVI commenting on the conversion of St. Paul in a general audience that he gave in September of 2008. He said that St. Paul's conversion was more like a death and resurrection experience than a conversion. On that road to Damascus, the, the, the Pope said, one existence died and another new one was born with the risen Christ, said the Holy Father. The risen Christ appeared to Saul and immediately changed Saul's way of thinking and changed his whole entire life as well. And remember what happened? Saul became actually blind when he saw the Lord and he didn't regain his sight and until when? Until three days later when he was baptized by Ananias. The Holy Father in his general audience said that Saul's resulting blindness was an exterior sign of how he was interiorly blinded to the truth before encountering Christ. It's baptism, is that's what made him see again. And the early church called the sacrament of baptism illumination. It's actually what they called the sacrament because through grace we receive the true light who is Jesus. So the conversion of St. Paul. Today is a wonderful day to pray for those in our lives and in our country and also in the world for whom neither preaching nor good example seem to make any kind of spiritual dent whatsoever. Sometimes God needs to intervene directly and we must pray for that. So let's ask Our Lady to obtain for us the conversion of great sinners and great persecutors of the church today as she did 2,000 years ago with Saul of Tarsus. I'm sure she prayed for him and that was part of his conversion who then became and still remains now a most precious gift to her son's church. Praise be Jesus and Mary.